Today I'm working in my sketchbooks. I'm at the very start of something new. Over the last few weeks, I've been thinking, looking, trying to figure out what it is that I'm going to paint next. And if I'm honest, I'm not entirely sure what that is yet. In this video, as I work in my sketchbooks, I'm going to share some of my go-to drawing methods and mediums. And if you stay till the end, you'll see these research drawings begin to take shape. I've also scattered throughout a couple of drawing pointers that I always fall back on when I'm feeling stuck. And if you are in that position too, I hope they might help. Since the beginning of this month, I've been overthinking and just getting in my own head rather than sitting down and letting the creative process and life in general do its thing. I've been wanting to know how it's all going to turn out before I even start. I want to see the results before I've done the learning and I've been wanting those dots to be joined before I even know what the dots are. So today, I'm going to take the very first steps into a brand new creative project. I'm just going to start and I'm going to begin to figure out what those dots might be through some doing instead of that thinking. Hello and a very warm welcome to this video. My name is Orla and I'm an abstract painter and illustrator. I've been making videos to document my art process and my thoughts on creativity here on YouTube, all inspired by my love of nature, landscape and the outdoors. Lately, I've been finding that having too many ideas can be just as much of a roadblock as having too few. Last week, I listened to this podcast and the episode title was You Can't Do It All. And I've had that thought going round in my mind every day since. I've been trying to swap it out from a fearful thing and instead look at it as a bit more of a gift in that I don't need to be able to do everything. I just need to try my best at a couple of good things. When I dive into something new, I find solace in getting it all out of my head and onto paper. My thoughts tend to race too fast just to carry them round all day, but it feels like shedding some weight when I can dump it all into my sketchbook or my notebook. So, today's adventure. I'm going to ease into a new series of paintings by working in my sketchbooks. In my last video, I chatted about how I was aiming to follow my curiosity this year as a kind of guiding force. So for this video, no frills, we're just going to jump in to the creative pool and see where it takes me. It feels like every year that I get older, I become more and more aware of the things that I don't know or just how much I don't know. So I've been thinking that maybe I can use this project right here as an excuse to learn a little bit more about the world around me. Not that we ever need excuses for that. I've got a deadline which is coming up this April and this is probably the perfect time to start making the work for that project. It's going to be a group show exhibiting in Scotland and I'm really, really looking forward to it. It's an exhibition all about the snorkelling artist residency that I went on last summer. And apart from being one of the best things I've ever done, I've still got a big pile of ideas and field research which I'd gathered from that trip, which I'm yet to develop and work through. The aim of that residency was to learn more about the marine habitats of Scotland's coasts and to translate that learning into some artwork. I still feel like I've really only scratched the surface on learning about these habitats, so I've been thinking that through this project I can learn a little bit more about these really special places whilst I draw and create. I already love drawing from videos because I love capturing the movement in that playing image 
And so I've decided to try and learn more at the same time by drawing from a couple of documentaries and informative videos here on YouTube. I don't know about you, but when I'm starting anything new, I like to ease myself in with something that I know, something that's really familiar, to kind of break the ice and get things moving. So for me today, that's been all about analytical drawing and practicing the art of looking. I've no idea if what I make in this session will be useful or even relevant to whatever I make later on, but I've decided to take a step back from thinking about those final paintings and end goal and focus on what I want to do right now. And right now that is to do some drawing studies and to work into my sketchbooks. As you I'm sure are well aware, sketchbooks are really beautiful things. They're space to make anything at all and can be the place to start before you know what or why or how. I think that repetition and practice are also pretty beautiful things. And after years of the stuff, I'm beginning to see some perspectives emerge in my own way of working, which I think could be called elements of my style. It's always really hard to see it in yourself, your own style. So it's pretty cool when you get that sneak peek, a little glimpse at something which feels like you creatively. Things that I've been noticing are things like my line work or how I've been playing with scale to compose my images and they are beginning to appear like little hallmarks in the arts that I make. Starting really simply like this with a black chunky pen or a piece of charcoal is one of my all-time favourite ways to get warmed up. And I'm all for making things easy and thinking about one thing at a time feels really good right now. Continuous line drawings, for that reason, remain my favourite way to warm up and to get my hand moving at all the angles that it can and to get some pretty interesting variation in line. Once I've warmed up into whatever I'm doing, I like to start to pull some of the extra medias in. Here I'm playing with some watercolour and adding details with oil pastels. I want to do a whole other video on this topic, but something I love to think about when I'm not sure how to tackle an image is to pick media that reflect the quality of whatever it is that I'm drawing. So for instance, if I'm drawing clouds, they are by nature kind of translucent, more wispy, more transient. And so I'm going to try and find a medium which feels a bit more like that. And equally, if I'm drawing, say, a tree which has very solid, rooted, hard qualities, I'm going to find something which is maybe more heavy to represent that kind of quality of mark or line. Typically sketchbooks for me are a kind of organisational process. I tend to work loose leaf on paper and then use the actual book formats or setting to organise my drawings into groups and pairs which seem to make sense together. So it's almost like a layout plan or a composition, taking all of these loose leaf pages and putting them together into some kind of narrative. So for me, working directly into the sketchbook, it feels a little bit alien and made me a little bit nervous but equally I don't know I'm interested to see what I learn from working directly into paper where I can't reorder and rearrange maybe I should just embrace a bit more of the chaos
So what I'm working from today is a bunch of photos and videos. They're images I'd taken from the shoreline when I was on the artist residency. My aim for the sketchbook work today is to look for different marks, different colours and textures within these photos and videos. And although it may not look like it, I'd still count these sketchbook pages as analytical drawings. I'm not making anything that I do up. Each line, each mark, each texture, colour, shape is informed by directly what I'm looking at. I'm just not necessarily composing it exactly where I found it or at the size that it is in the image. And I think maybe this looking, this zooming and scaling is revealing itself to be another hallmark and process that contributes to my own style. I'm continuing to explore this idea of zooming into the details within this watercolour and acrylic sketch. I'm drawing from a piece of dried seaweed. I think it might be dried dulse, which has been held up to the light. So it, when the light shines through, you get all these incredible colours that really illuminate the thing. And the seaweed itself almost looks like a watercolour painting in its own right. I wanted to show you these big paintings that I made a few years back. They were made using acrylic inks on wet paper and I'd recently pulled them out of a cupboard to take another look. And I've got to say, I really, really love them. It's not always that you can say that about your own work, but there's something about these which have stood the test of time that I still really enjoy. I think it's something in the loose and gestural feeling. I haven't overworked them. And that is really speaking to me at the moment, all that space. I think I can probably use these as a kind of springboard to get some ideas from regarding process or materials for some future paintings. In these, I was thinking about the above and below sensation of being above and below the surface of water. And I painted them when my friend had just got back from Greenland. She'd shown me images from her trip and I'm totally captivated by that landscape and I'd really, really love to visit one day. Another thing I've been playing around with is digital painting on my iPad. It's a tool that I use a lot for commercial projects I work on and I'm thinking that there might be some potential to explore this in my painting practice. It's a fun challenge to try and achieve the depth of a physical painting in the digital world. These two are sketches that I'd made of marine environments within Photoshop. I love that when I zoom into them, I can find new compositions that might inspire future paintings. I'm not sure that I'd ever want my final work to be digital, but I'm thinking it could be a really good method or tool to generate more compositional ideas and try out colour combinations and things like that really quickly. We shall see. These iPad drawings were made in a purely observational way, the same as the sketchbooks I'm working in. I wasn't really thinking about composition at all as I went, I was only drawing what I could see in front of me. And instead of focusing on getting it in like quotation marks right, I was just thinking about finding the best textures and the best colours I could match the reference imagery to. And if you're interested, the images I was working from were amazing photos by um, on Instagram, his handle is at James Low or Low Wildlife on Instagram, and I'll put a link to his work below. 
The photos that that man takes are just unreal. And every time I see his work, I'm just reminded of how insane and weird and wonderful our planet and our home is. If you've ever been snorkeling or scuba diving, you might know what I mean when I say this. The perspective that you get when you're underwater can seem almost flatter. It's kind of harder to get a sense of which way is up, and there is no horizon line. Or less at one at least, if you don't count the seabed or the water line above you. And I think that lack of horizon line is one that I really want to challenge myself with in whatever I make this year. I'm really comfortable with painting semi-abstracted landscapes now, or at least in the method that I have been approaching it over the years. And I'd really like to take that challenge to expand my composition and perspective with some more abstracted compositional paintings. One of my favourite things to do when I'm not sure where or how to get started is to make a print. Similar to underpainting, it's about page preparation, but this is so exciting because, well, it's a print, so it's always automatically really exciting. So for this, all you need to do is put way too much paint on one of your pages and then flip that round either to the opposite page in your sketchbook or grab another page from another sketchbook and plop it on top, give it a bit of pressure and then peel them away from each other and you'll have really, really interesting textures to work on top of. A top tip that I'm always telling myself when I'm drawing, especially when I'm sketching outside, is that I don't need to capture everything all at once. So I'm just going to focus on one quality at a time. So say that's texture or colour, or I'm looking at perspective. But I'm not going to try and get everything down and I'm not going to try and think about everything all at once. Another of my firm favourite drawing approaches is to draw negative space instead of positive space. So simply drawing everything around the subject that I'm focusing on. It always gives me some interesting shapes and makes me really concentrate on what I'm looking at. As always, a huge thank you to my wonderful Patreon members. I'm really looking forward to our monthly online meetup which, if you're watching this video on the day of release, is happening tomorrow. In these meetups, I share an in-person tutorial, and tomorrow we're going to be focusing on developing analytical sketches, like the ones I've demonstrated in this video, breaking down the process of depth with scale, negative space, and mixed media. Over the next few months, I'll be sharing a series of pre-recorded tutorials on my Patreon too, which you can dip into at any time. These tutorials break down my process for structuring and developing a series of paintings. So if you're looking for a little guidance to start and work through a painting series, I'll pop a link below so you can find out more. My sketchbooks act as a library, as a kind of ideas bank of different marks, textures, colours and shapes. I think I'm going to start to pull out a couple of these different elements into slightly more developed drawings on loose leaf paper in my next studio session. So stay tuned to see those ideas develop in my next video. I'll leave you here with a rundown of the final pages from the sketchbook session. 
As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you outside.